If you have your Bibles, would you turn to John? I am so fired up today, i got to pace myself. I really do because I feel His presence so powerfully. You know what I want to say? That I'm proud of you men, but He is more proud of you. And uh, it seems like every year we, we pick out or we get special speakers that come and, and they kind of make men feel bad sometimes. Because I don't know about you, but I can't measure up. I can't measure up to be the father that I need to be. I can't measure up to be the husband I need to be. I can't measure up to be the grandfather I need to be. Let's go a little further. I can't, I can't measure up to be the great-grandfather. I can't measure up to be your pastor. I just can't measure up. That's why God sent His Son, Jesus. So to God, today, guys, you're not going to be beaten up by some, some sermon on Father's Day and make you get out of here feel like, man, I know and God knows that you didn't intentionally want to hurt your children in any way at all, that you did your best to raise them. And I want you to put your head up today. You are a dad, and you should be proud of that. And no matter what, any, any word that would try to rise up against you and condemn you, be canceled in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're looking beyond the natural. I, I really felt like, how could I preach a better Father's Day message than, than continuing this series on, on beyond the natural? We talked about God's nature. We talked about God's works. Now today, we're going to be continuing our series talking about the person of Christ. How can we operate in the supernatural if we don't understand who the person of Jesus Christ actually is. Jesus gets misrepresented both in the church and outside of the church. Jesus gets blamed for a lot of lame brain things that we do ourselves. And so today, I believe that the miraculous, the supernatural is going to be unleashed. And maybe you thought when pastor you announced beyond the natural to the supernatural, maybe you had preconceived ideas. But if we do not have an anchor, if we do not have stability, and if we do not have a foundation, we will have frivolous, and we will have so out of order that it will, it will, not, it will be a stench into the nostrils of God. So if we're going to operate in the supernatural, to go beyond the natural, people are looking for the supernatural in all the wrong places. And the enemy has a cheap counterfeit for what Jesus has is for real. So, so today, we're going to talk about the person of Christ. The person of Jesus. John chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. And then we're going to be prepared to read verses 14 and 18, and then we'll go to Philippians 2 and 1 Peter 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. We're going to go on to another verse here. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Let's look to verses um, actually 14 through 18. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among them. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of Him and cried out, saying, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for He was before me. And of His fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who was in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. And let's move to Philippians chapter, chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. See, we're all looking for a reputation, but I want you to, I want you to see this. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death 
of the cross. And then 1 Peter chapter 2. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, did not beat them crazy. No, did not revile in return. But he suff when he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. For this you were called, because Christ also suffered. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. You may be seated. The person of Jesus Christ. We're talking about looking beyond the natural to the supernatural. And the reason why people are falling like flies in Christendom, and people who had once had a strong faith are denying the authenticity and the validity of the Word of God is because they have failed to recognize on a renewed day, moment by moment, every single day, the person of Jesus Christ. We need to understand who Jesus is. I believe sometimes we as we as a Bible-believing people, and, and the Assemblies of God means all the gospel, sometimes we get a bad rap. People say, well, that church, they believe in three gods. No, we don't. We believe in one God with three personalities, and distinct personalities, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And today, as we talk about Jesus, let's talk about Jesus more than we talk about our problems. Can I get a witness? We need to understand the person of Jesus Christ. The gospels show that Jesus is the Son of God in a unique sense. And as I was studying this, it, it's really so crystal clear, but sometimes we miss it. We never find Jesus teaching others to say, Our Father. <laughs> Look at the Bible. You're never going to see Jesus saying, Our Father, and including Himself. We never see Jesus saying, My Father, and including anyone else. And, and when you think of this, if you really grasp your mind about this, this was, this was the major thing that, that, that brought opposition against Jesus Christ. Unbelieving Jewish people wanted to kill Jesus for what I just shared with you. Because they opposed the legalistic way of keeping the Sabbath. I believe everybody should have a Sabbath. I believe everybody should have a day that you count as your own. The hurry you go, the behind you get, that's not grammatically correct. If you, if, you don't take, if you don't take time out, time will take out of you more than you care to give it. You and I can be so busy that, that we can lose sight of, of who He is. We need a day of rest. We need a time of rest. Usually Mondays are my day off. And some people say, well, what are your hours? My hours are really 24-7. I don't really have office hours. I do. I come to the office. But what am I going to do? If I get a phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning, not answer the phone? Absolutely not. My question in anything I do to ever try to lead me in any area, I ask myself the question, what would Jesus do? You see, we need to be reintroduced to the person of Jesus Christ. And we need to understand what he stands for. They wanted even more to kill him when he recognized that he was called both God literally and his, as his own father. The, the Sadducees, the, the Pharisees, you have the uh, audacity, Jesus, to say that you're equal with the Father. Prove it. John 5, 18 says, Therefore, Jesus sought all. They thought, sought all the more to kill Jesus because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also, he also said that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Beloved, we've got to have this foundation because many times we, we don't understand who Jesus is, therefore we don't live in victory. We, 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 we've done that whole thing down and we must not do that. This same opposition dominated the, the thinking of the worldlings that were opposed to the church of Jesus Christ. Make no mistake about it. Enemy number one to this nation and to this world right now are Christians. I didn't even get a witness on that. But pretty much enemy, enemy number one are Christians. You are being targeted and stop being an ostrich with your head in the sand. Do your homework. We are being targeted. The church is being targeted. The only entity that God has to move through is the church of Jesus Christ. Everybody that knows Him as their Savior. 
And that's why there's such great attack, even on the personhood of Jesus Christ. And people are getting mixed up and confused and they're looking for the supernatural. You cannot have the supernatural until you understand the person of Jesus Christ. So we're talking about Jesus being the Son of God. The central truths that I want to share with you today, we won't have them up there because I didn't give them out, but I want to share it with you. The central truth, something that we can grasp and take away from this message is Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh, truly God and truly man. And the learning and application we need to get from this message, number one, to understand the character and the nature of Jesus Christ. If we don't, we'll live in constant defeat. Thank you for getting that up. That is a miracle. <laughs> number three, to appreciate Christ's purpose in coming to dwell among us. And four, to seek the pattern of our lives after the character and nature of Jesus Christ. We used to sing an old chorus in the church, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like Him. All through life's journey from earth to glory, all I ask is to be like Him. Oh, I can remember first being in the ministry, and I felt less than. I, I saw all these other preachers, and I, and I saw this, and I saw that, and I saw their gifts and all, all their talents, and, and I went through all that, and belly aching, and, and, and giving God all this kind of stuff. And then finally God gave me a stern rebuke and said, Son, I created you in my image. Submit yourself to me, and I will take you places you cannot go, doing things you never thought you'd ever do if you yield yourself to me. That's the key. That's the key. Jesus, if we're going to understand and go beyond the natural to the supernatural and understand the personhood of Christ, we need to understand that he's the Son of God. Luke chapter 1, 32 to 35, he will be great, and we will call him the name of the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, Mary, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called, what? The Son of God. If we're going to know the personhood of Jesus, first of all, we need to understand that we're going to move beyond the natural to the supernatural. We need to understand that Jesus is the Son of God. He's the son. Turn to your neighbor and say, He's the Son of God. You see, that, that is being challenged today. The authenticity of the Word of God. The audacity of the enemy. And the church is cowering down. I will not cower down. I will stand up for the authenticity and the validity of the Word of God. That Jesus is the Son of God. He's the Son of God. Hallelujah. And it, and it came upon Jesus. The power of the highest will overshadow Him. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. We read it before in John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then Romans chapter 1, verse 3, concerning His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God, the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. He is not in the grave. He is alive. And because He lives, you and I live also. He's the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in Him, and though we're dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever believeth in Him shall never die. You see, when we take our last breath, you know, somebody said, well, well you know, that, that person's dead. No, when they know Jesus Christ, they will be more alive than when they walk the face of the earth. Because they'll be with the King of Kings. They'll be with the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. And then I want to go a step further. Not only is the Son of God, hallelujah, He is the Holy Son of God. Jesus is holy. You and I cannot be holy in and of ourselves until we understand who Jesus and the person of Christ really is. See, the four Gospels introduce us to Jesus. Matthew does a superb job. He introduces Jesus as a descendant of David, of Abraham. That is the heir of God's covenant and the promise and, and the climax of the long history of, of, of the dealings with Israel. Israel will always be a strategic, a, a, street, a strategic area in prophecy, biblical prophecy. If you want to know about biblical prophecy, study the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. 
Jesus is the Son of the living God. He's the Holy Son of God. Hallelujah. Then Matthew goes on to tell us how God persuaded Joseph to accept Mary because the child in her womb was, the, was of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 1.20, it says that he was born through the power of the Holy Spirit. Church, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm sick and tired of punching the spiritual clock, coming to church, and I'm the preacher. I want to come to a place that's alive. I want to come to a place where people determine that even though hell has been hot on their tracks, that we're going to stand up and say, Jesus, we serve you. We want to be reintroduced to who you are. We want to be carriers of your truth and walk in your power. We want to move beyond the natural into the supernatural. What do you, what do you think is happening? We're, we're seeing kids being saved and, and, and baptized, and we're seeing people filled with the Holy Spirit. We're seeing God call people out of darkness into the marvelous light. That didn't happen because of some fancy preacher. That didn't come from, from some doctrinal dissertation. That came from the Word of the living God that we preach Jesus the same yesterday, today, hallelujah, and tomorrow. He is the Holy Son of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit would overshadow her, Mary, as the Spirit hovered over the original sea and prepared for God's creative acts in Genesis chapter 1. The Spirit brooded over the water. The Spirit of God is here today. And if you're sleeping, the Spirit of God can touch you in your sleep. Hallelujah. If you're alert, God can touch you in your alertness today. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit would overshadow her. And, 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 it, and then the power of God would do the work. He would be creating Mary's body for whatever was necessary for the Savior to be born. Oh, I love Jesus, don't you? I love Jesus. I, I love talking about Jesus. I love sharing Jesus. Hallelujah. Everywhere we go, we share Jesus. I mean, we share Jesus with someone we went to lunch with and come to find out that, 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 that they go to New Day and, and they were just happy that some other Christian was there. Hallelujah. I mean, we should not be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for it's the power of God unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I tell you, the, the world is in your face. And I'm, I'm going to stand up for righteousness. Hallelujah. Mark's gospel gives no details really in, in great detail. But John takes us back to the very beginning. Before, before anything was created. I love this. In the past eternity, the Son of God, His title was the Word. I love that. Jesus, the Word. The Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word. I love the word. It's a good book. We ought to fall in love with it anew. Shame on me if I listen to this and I listen to that and I watch this and I watch that and I don't get into his word. Because I'm going to tell you what, they might yank it from our hands, but they cannot yank it from our heart. You said that will never happen only by the grace of God, church. Only by the grace of God. And it, listen to this. He is the express image of God. Hebrews 1.3. And, and, and Jesus would do more than bring God's message. Listen to me. He is God's message. He didn't only bring it or deliver it. Oh, we, I, I see people, man, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring your best. Well, he brought his best. His one and only. And not only, not only did he, he bring it, did he bring it, but, but he lives up to it and he's looking for the word to be in us. And John, how does he relate Jesus? He relates him as the Word. The Word was with God. This means more than mere existence alongside God. It's more than that. But it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. The Greek preposition is translated with. And it's not the ordinary word so translated. In fact, the same word used here is translated 539 times in, in the King James Version. To, unto, or towards. What does it mean, Pastor? It always implies mutual fellowship and intercommunication between God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. 
It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's fellowship. It's koinonia. I love to come. This is my favorite time, Sunday morning. This is work day for me, but it's praise day for me. It's coming with my family. It's being able to have kinship and, and, and brotherhood and, and Christhood here today so that we can understand and recognize we must move beyond the natural to the supernatural, and we're never going to know it until we know the person here to Jesus. He is being challenged. He is being challenged. <laughs> he is being challenged. The Word was with God. The Son was face to face with God in close, close personal fellowship in a relationship that had no beginning and will have no end. <laughs> and will have no end. For He, Jesus, is, is part of the very being of God. John goes on to say that that the Word was with God. He was eternally and truly deity. He, he, uh, he shares the nature and the very being of God, yet with eternally separate in, uh, in identity and, and personality. He do, did not become God. He is God. Come on, church. He didn't become God. He is God. He is God. He is God. He will always be God. So not only do we talk about, about the Son of God and we're going to Understand the personhood of Jesus Christ and, and understand that He's the Holy Son of God. I want you to know that He's the powerful Son of God. I said He's the powerful Son of God. He is the powerful Son of God. There's nothing that you're going through that Jesus, if you have an intimate relationship with Him, He will not take you through. He will take you through. I said He will take you through the tumultuous seas of life and He'll bring you where you need to go and where I need to go and where this church needs to go. Do you know new life is on a journey? God is taking us into the deeper reservoir of His power and His glory and His might. And I want you to get ready. You need to get ready for there's going to be an unleashing and an outpouring of the Spirit of the living God as soon as we realize who Jesus really is. Because that's being challenged. Jesus took the disciples aside because he is the powerful son of God at Caesarea Philippi. And he asked them, who do you say I am? And that Peter guy, the one that had hoof and mouth disease, the one that every other sentence would put his foot in his mouth, and we've never done that before. Turn to your neighbor and say, I know you've never done that before. I have. I have. I have. And what did Peter say? He answered him so truly. You are the Christ the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. And, and, and Jesus then replied, flesh and blood did not reveal it unto you, but the Father which is in heaven has revealed it to you. Listen, church, only as we recognize Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, can we benefit fully from the ability that He puts in us to be more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. You see, the reason why many of you are struggling today is you and I need to be reintroduced to the personality of Jesus. We need to know truly who He is. I'm here to tell you, Jesus gets a bad rap in the church and outside the church. He does. He does. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. I believe that with all of my heart. Then God wants to transfer the power that's in Yeshua HaMashiach, and He wants us to be carriers of His glory and to work in His power. And we're never going to know that unless we're reintroduced to Jesus as the Son of God. You know what else He is? He's the Son of Man. Oh, I feel good today. You all been praying for me this week. My battery is like way charged. <laughs> way charged. I even got back to the gym. Hallelujah. That helped me out. But 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 all getting back to God is the greatest thing. You know, sometimes you got to be careful as a pastor. You don't want to be too transparent. How many know that prayer is powerful? That when we pray for one another, God moves mountains and he touches our heart with his spiritual vitality. Prove it, Pastor, that he's the Son of God. Matthew 1.21. And she, Mary, will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for she, he shall save his people from their sin. Prove it, Pastor. John 1, 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of God. Prove it further, Pastor. John 1, 18, No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the virgin birth. Matthew and Luke record the virgin birth of Jesus. First of all, it shows us that God knows how to fulfill prophecy. 
He knows how to fulfill prophecy because his prophecy that he is faithful to do so even when it seems impossible in the natural. If you and I will pick up our Bible on a regular basis and we will place it right next to the newspaper or anything that we're watching on television, everything that's happening today, there are so many multiple prophecies that are being filled. That will be discussed on Wednesday night as you come. Prophecies are being filled every single day, every moment of every day. Because Jesus, whatever he says, is going to come to fruition and come to pass. Everything that I promised, I've not always done. How about you? There have been things that I thought I was going to ascertain and, and go beyond just the mediocrity. And then there's times when I fall, but I get back up. And God breathes the breath of life in me. And the personality of Jesus Christ takes over the flesh. And the spirit of the living God dwells in me and helps me to walk in righteousness and purity and holiness without which no man will be able to see God. This is not religiosity this is Christianity 101 being lived out in your life and my life he is the son of man we got to move beyond the natural it helps us to understand how Jesus is truly and uh, truly and fully the son of God he is truly and fully the son of man amen you and look at Jesus eternal omnipresent everywhere present omniscient all-knowing, omnipotent, all-powerful. But look at Jesus, the man, God, who condescended in the form of flesh and was born in a lonely stable because there was no room in the inn. He was born so that you and I could be reborn. He was born so you and I could live in victory. He was born so you and I could have the audacity to understand the personhood of Jesus and display him in our life and live it out so that people, people are coming. Young people are hungry for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must protect our children. Right now, we are assessing how many people are going to be coming to our learning center. And we, we are saying now we are having, we don't have enough room. We, we have a waiting list. But I'm telling you, God wants us to spare and protect the children from the garbage that's going on in the public school. I mean, we rode by schools this, this week and on a prayer drive, and we, and we tried to be inconspicuous because we didn't want anybody arresting us, but we just wanted to go near the school and just pray. Pray. Pray for the Christian teachers. We have Christian teachers in our, in our, in our church that, that it's difficult for them but we, we went to those schools this week and we prayed over them, prayed over them. We, we went through town and just began to pray over our university and over our city. God loves Westfield, Massachusetts. God loves New England. It's not the burial ground for preachers or churches. This is ripe and ready for revival and the supernatural. And we're never going to move beyond the natural if we don't know the personhood of Jesus, who he truly, truly is. See, the manhood of Jesus he was made of flesh. He hungered. He got thirsty. He slept on the boat when the disciples were freaking out. And he was sleeping. And they woke him up. And he rebuked him. said, listen, you can rebuke the storm. When you and I accept Jesus, he lives within us. And his power is there. It lets us know that God does indeed intervene in the affairs of men and in the course of history. And he has a plan of blessing for you and I, and he's a plan, he has a plan for this church, and it's not plan B. It's plan A. I have no idea why I keep praying for Family Worship Center. I know God woke me up, gave me that, whether it happens, if it's ever built under our ministry or not, Family Worship Center. A place where, where we could expand. A place where people could come with af after school and on computers and, and, and we could help them and, and, and expand, uh, expand the boundaries of our tent. I don't know. Maybe it won't happen under our ministry. It doesn't happen. All I know, without a vision, the people perish. And each day I pray, God, Family Life Center. Land is exploding. It's, 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 it's out of whack. But I'm telling you, if it's in the plan and program of God, God will move heaven and earth to bring it past. And all I want is what God wants. I have no desire for this church to get in debt. Hallelujah. I believe, that, I believe, that, I believe God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and he owns all the hills, and he owns all the cattle. And he's able to unleash whatever we need 
if we will serve Him. You see, those who follow a humanistic or a materialistic philosophy have trouble with the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. If ever anything has come under attack, it's, a, it's been the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. That's come under great attack. Great attack. The virgin birth uh, as, as some mere uh, ex accident or coincidence. I want you to listen to this. Since mothers have only an X chromosome in their genes an ovum developed by some accidental stimulation, it could only produce a girl, right? Did you follow with me? What do women have? What kind of chromosomes? The virgin birth of Jesus Christ as the Spirit of God moved on Mary is a miracle of God. A miracle of God. Of God. I think some of you missed that. Beyond the natural. We have to, we have to know that we're being touched by the supernatural power of God. That, that, that you and I who know Jesus Christ, the Savior, we have no problem with, with the validity of, of, of the virgin birth of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, what is it? You want my answer to people who want to get in your face and argue? It's a miracle. Miracle. The supernatural power of God. Whew, he breathed into man's nostrils, and man, and man became a living soul. You're a miracle. You might get rowdy sometimes, and you might fall, and you might fester, and you might frizzle up, and you might frizzle out, but I'm here to tell you, you're a miracle. You're a miracle. Every one of you that are here today are a miracle. You're not a biological blob, and you're not an accident. You've been created in the image of God to understand this personhood of who Jesus truly, truly is. Hallelujah. Oh, I love the power of the Holy Spirit. We must move beyond the supernatural. The planet Earth is positioned within the galaxy known as the Milky Way. It's been said that if we were to compare the entire North America continent to the Milky Way, Earth in comparison would be no larger than a minute speck of dust deposited anywhere on this continent. When we add to the picture the fact that our galaxy is only one of many galaxies in the universe, we are quickly made aware of how small we are and how big He is. Do you think your problem's too big for God? I asked you a question. Do you believe your problem's too big for God? It's our perception of who He is. It's how we perceive him. He is not one. Jesus wasn't weak. Oh, they look at Jesus as a sissy. He was strong. How could anybody endure a cat of nine tails whipping you, your body, in, 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 into unrecognizable fashion? How, how could it happen that his beard would be plucked out and, and they, would, they would just malign him and ridicule him and, and do all kinds of things? I mean, he was, he was a man's man. You talk about Father's Day, Jesus is a man's man. He's the son of the living God, and he's the son of man. Hallelujah. And he did it for you, and he did it for me. Revealing God in the human sphere is this. The whole Bible gives us a revelation of God, but the fullness of God's character and nature has been revealed in Jesus. John says this. No man has seen God at any time. That is with their physical eyes. The Bible says in John chapter 4, 24, God is a spirit. Help me out. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And I want you to know that this person of Jesus, he's infinite. He's infinite. Filling the universe. Even with all of the telescopes and one of the most one of the more stronger ones the the Hubble telescope cannot give us a clear total picture of the stars pastor how can we expect to see God how we see God is through Jesus because Jesus said if you've seen the father you've seen me that's how Jesus, who is God, who is also the only begotten, the Son of Man, truly has declared Him. That is, Jesus has made Him known. And in Jesus, we see the explanation, the interpretation, and the description of who God is. How can we know God? Through Jesus. Through Jesus. 
through Jesus and who he's really like. Hallelujah. With, while the earth, uh, in, in, in the flesh, Jesus, while he was in the earth, was, was, was true, perfect representation of God the Father. Jesus' life clearly reflected the Father's righteousness. So we're talking about moving beyond the natural. Some of you are right now about thinking about what you're going to eat for dinner after the service, and your mind's beginning to wonder. But pull every thought into the captivity and the obedience of Jesus Christ for the next few moments, please. We talked about Jesus, the Son of God. We talked Jesus about the Son of Man. Thirdly and lastly, Jesus and his sinless character. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as you and I. As you and I, yet he was without sin. I cannot say to Therese, I cannot say to Lori, I cannot say to Amy, I cannot say to anyone who's ever walked the road of of losing someone special in their life and have the audacity as a pastor to say, I know how you feel. That is a lie from the st straight from the pit of hell. Jesus sympathizes. Jesus empathizes with what every one of us are going through. Whatever battle you're fighting, Jesus is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. This sinless Christ Hallelujah. And, and, and he's holy. He's holy. Look at Isaiah 6, 3. And, and the angels cried unto one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. I said the whole earth is full of his glory. Hallelujah. The whole earth is full of his glory. He is, he is holy. He was the only man who ever lived to, to be totally free from sin, who, or, or who did not sin, excuse me. He was tempted. We're talking about the humanity of Christ. We're talking about God condescending in the form of man and Yeshua being born and tempted like you and I. And when he bled, he bled red, just like you and I bleed. And he's touched with what touches our heart. He was the only man who ever lived a life that way. In Jesus' sinless obedience, we see God's work accomplished. He always spoke of his Father. That's what he did. You know what we do? We're looking for the accolades, acc uh, the accolades of man. Well, thank God I, I saved somebody. You didn't save Diddley Squad. You and I can't save anybody. We belong to the Savior and we're carriers of His glory. And we give the message of the authenticity of Jesus Christ. And it makes conviction come upon people's heart. And they confess their sin. And they relinquish that. And they, and they repent in the spirit of repentance. And they come to know Jesus Christ. He's the miracle worker. But He's looking for vessels to work through. And His plan is plan A. He wants to, he wants to infuse the miraculous in you and I. But He will not give the miraculous to anyone who doesn't know His person. He will not share that with just anybody. It comes with a price. It comes with a price. You say the price was paid. We need to pay the price of spending time in intimacy with him. In Jesus' sinless obedience, we see God's work accomplished. He always spoke with the Father. Jesus was able to say, which of you can convict me of sin? You say, Pastor, Pastor, I keep doing the same thing all the time. If you keep doing the same thing all the time, you're going to get the same results. Be reintroduced to Jesus, not religion. You say, well, I tried that. No, you didn't. Because if you tried that and laid down your life fully for him, you will be victorious even in the middle of the storm. Hallelujah. God would not give us this book of victory and a love letter to us if he didn't want to fulfill that in our heart. The sinless character of the person of Jesus Christ moving beyond the natural to the supernatural. And then Jesus is loving. How many are grateful that Jesus is loving? That man, when we get out of line, thank God he doesn't beat us to a point. He convicts us. And he wants us to repent of our sin. But I love John 3.16, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. And God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, Jesus, might be saved. You want to say, Pastor, I don't know about my neighbor. They might not know about you either. I don't know about my friend. I don't know about that person. I forgive us, Jesus, for writing people off. Forgive us, Jesus, if you could save Wayne Hosgrove <coughs> for me to write somebody off. Forgive me, Jesus, for not having enough faith to believe that if you save me, you can save anybody. Forgive me, Jesus, for not believing that, that there's a city called Westfield that's going to hell in a handbasket. But forgive me if I do not believe for the, for the impossible to be made possible. That the breath, the rock of God, the word of God would spread in this city. And, and in every crack and crevice, we would see a move of the spirit of the living God. And before we're seeing the spirit of the age, and before we see that, the, the enemy's going to come in, but the spirit of God is going to raise up a standard against him. I believe that these are the greatest days for the history of the church of Jesus Christ if we will know who Jesus truly is and operate and go beyond the natural to the supernatural. You know, not only is Jesus sinless and loving, but he's humble. I want, look at your pastor for a second. It's hard sometimes to be humble. You know the hardest time to be humble? When God starts to use you. Come on. Come on. That's what is hard. God starts blessing you. That P called pride. It's like a rooster ready to launch on you. Jesus is humble. Prove it, Pastor. And I'll close with Philippians chapter 2, 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But he, Jesus, made himself the King of kings and Lord of lords of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming into the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even though Worst kind of death anybody could ever have. The death of the cross. Would you stand with me, please? Jesus left the radiance and the splendor of divine glory. He left the praise of, of angels and he took the form of humanity and became a man. Not only did he become truly man, he was still truly God. He humbled himself. For our sakes, he took a humble place and came to save us so that we could be carriers of his glory and to see other people saved. He humbled himself into a shameful kind of death. What kind of death was it? It was the cross kind of death. The death that was beyond human comprehension. And he did it for you and he did it for me, and he did it for this world. And if we're ever going to move beyond the natural to the supernatural, we're not going to until we understand who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that he's the son of God. I'm thankful that he's the son of man. And I'm thankful for his sinless character. And when you've got, when you've got a baseball so-called club, who lives out on the left coast that wants to have people come to their game who dress themselves up as Jesus and denounce him and make fun of him and you're going to celebrate that? I'm a Red Sox fan but when it was gay pride game I watched it and I knew there was going to be that and I turned it off not because I hate gay people not because I, 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 I feel that, that I cannot care and love everyone. But I am telling you what God calls sin. We need to call sin. And it separates us from God. I turned that off and I did not watch that game. And I refused to watch it. I'm telling you, I want to be reintroduced to who Jesus really is. I want to be a pastor that, that preaches the truth and doesn't water down anything. 
And if we lose people, so be it. But we'll gain more than we ever lose. Hey, listen to me. Well, if I leave your church, you'll never make it financially. I hope that door doesn't hit your gluteus maximus too quickly before you leave. Because God owns the cattle on a thousand hilltops. He'll make a way where there is no way. He's Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Every head bowed, please. No one looking around. Eyes closed. Hallelujah. We need to look beyond the natural to the supernatural. We need to know that he's God, that he's the son of God, the son of man, that he's sinless. And we're going to, we're going to go even further next week should Jesus tarry. And Father, I thank you today for every father in this place and those that will be viewing this via the internet. Bless every dad, Father. I thank you for restoring my relationship with some of my kids that was severed, but you restored it. You restored it. You're a God of restoration. And uh, get your sneakers on, sinner kids or, or sinner adults, and run as far and as fast and try to hide yourself from God. But wherever you go, he's been there long before you ever got there. Hallelujah, because he's the creator of the universe, and he loves you. I'm talking today to drug addicts. I'm talking today to sex fiends. I'm talking today who people who do not have the victory in their life. I'm talking to people that are up one day and down the next. Up one day, down the next. They're in and out. They have to be coerced to come to the house of God. I said that on my closing message, and someone came up to me and said that they were talking to one of their close relatives, and they got on their case to make them come to church. And the last thing I said was something like that. And, and this individual looked up at this other individual and said, I'm sorry, I should have come because I want to be here. Stay away if you want to stay away. But I've come today because I need Jesus. And I need my brothers and sisters. And so go ahead. Hide your head in the sand like an ostrich and go into some cave and eat worms and segregate yourself and, and live in pity for the rest of your life. But you won't do that if you're reintroduced, reintroduced to the person of Jesus Christ. Is there anyone here this, this morning who doesn't know Jesus as their Savior? Oh, you know about Him, or maybe you once knew Him, but you drifted away, and you're as lost as lost can be. But today, you want to consecrate yourself to Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand. Lift your hand up to Jesus right now. If there's anybody in this auditorium, amen. Don't be ashamed. Anybody, I'm going to wait a few moments. Is there somebody here today that is not following Jesus. Not, on, not only are you in sin, you're living in sin. But Jesus, yes, thank you. Is there somebody else? Somebody else here. The Spirit of God is moving. He's brooding over this place like He did over the waters as, as creation was thrust forth. Is there anybody else? I want to talk to those of you that are viewing this, that, that wherever you are, if you're in your home or wherever you might be, you could be in some bar someplace. I don't know, but I pray that God would get a hold of you that God would save you, that you would repent and ask Jesus to come into your life in the mighty name of Christ. Look at me today, church. I want him, don't you? I want him. If, if you're looking for something fancy, if you're looking for something better, then you're, you're in the wrong place. New life's not for everybody. New life in Christ is for everybody. But you see, I don't want, I don't want to be taken up by the cares of this world. I don't want to compromise. I don't, want to, I don't want to preach at you. Whenever I preach, I preach along with you. I say us because God is working on all of us. But God is raising up a church in these last days. And we've got to be willing to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow him. Amen.